Back here at the hot rod lathe with the work in the chuck, I uh, I took a I took a cut to uh, clean this up from that rough end over there. And let's take a let's take a quick look at the taper here. I got this better gauge on here. Okay, I got that zero up there. We'll see how uh, it's always bigger on the end. I'm telling you. Well, let's look and see how much it is. Three ten thousandths bigger on the end. And I'm telling you, for that diameter of two inches in this machine, that's not real bad. But it would really be nice to knock another tenth off that. Let, let's see if I can do that with the next cut. Okay. Control on! <laughs> That kicks the transformer on. Okay, the big transformer. Okay, here we go. I had to find a, I had to find another brush. Here we go. I should be ready for that next cut. I'm gonna kick her up. I think I'm gonna try it about, uh, you know, 3,837, somewhere in there. It's a half thousand speed, that's why it's taken it a while. Set that indicator to zero there. Okay. Back it up. Get the wax off it. Okay. Now, let's see where we're at with the gauge. Ah, 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. Snug, snug that thing, uh, inch it up to uh, zero. Kind of awkward these things are. I'll lock that. And uh, this is a Mitt to Toyo brand. It's uh, a copy of the old Poughkeepsie uh, Paralock. If you're familiar with these things, hey, that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, we're good there. Let's see how much taper we got on the end here. How are we doing? Oh, look at that. Two tenths taper, less than two tenths. Now, see, that gets you in the ballpark of fitting a precision bearing. The maximum is two tenths out. Look at that. A tenth and a half. That's pretty good. How about that? Okay, now what we gotta do, I, I think that's okay, we might improve on that, but that is, as you get the part smaller, you can get that down to a half tenth, okay? And one of the things I wanna point out on this machine is the steady rest. The bore on the steady rest is three inches. And I've used these machines a lot, and I kind of find that they kind of start running out of precision at three inches. I just thought I'd kick that out. Now, of course, you know, you can do larger parts and do good stuff on them and stuff like that, but, I, but when you're really getting down to using this kind of gauge, uh, it, 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 uh, it gets kind of tough after three inches, and it's tough at three inches. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just real happy uh, with the taper that we got there, right there. That's just great. So now what we got to do is uh, work this stuff around, you know, work our speed, work our depth of cut to reduce the taper. But at the same time, we have to hit a target diameter at some point, you know, to fit that uh, precision bearing. So. Um, that's what the next, uh, the, the next, uh, stuff we're going to do it, is that. Okay. Now, I, I'm going to, I got a couple minutes here. I'm going to show you something I got to make on this slave. And it's a tool maker slave. And I'll show you a problem I have. You might get a kick out of this. And it has to do with the old brown and sharp narrow. I got here, look at all this junk I got piled on here. But look at this. Now, I knew this when this was sitting in the junkyard. And this is probably uh, a big reason why this machine was sitting in the junkyard. Now, look at this vertical head attachment. You see how it is? Okay. Now, it's driven here. Okay. Now, it's got a quill feed up here, right? You can feed that quill down. <laughs> You're not going to believe it when I show you this. Let's get this junk out of the way. The maximum distance. Now this, the, the knee is all the way down. Okay. And so uh, with the quill all the way up, um, it's like nine inches. Nine inches is all there is. So this is a boring head in there, see? I mean, it'll, it'll collide with a vice, and it's, <laughs> it's not fall away. So I, I'm going to gain an inch here, right here. I'm going to make a tool holder. This is a 40 taper, uh, and this is a light-duty head. It doesn't have drive lugs for the 40 taper, okay? It doesn't really need that. But I'm going to make a 40 taper that that removes that one inch so the head at least gain another uh, inch on there. <laughs> but, you know, the, the mill will do everything I need it to do. And uh, one, of, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to build some antique rifles, some sharps, old sharps rifles. And uh, this is going to be a fun little uh, machine to use for that project. But when I need, you know, distance and more spindle speeds and stuff, this is only 1250. 
um, I've got the jig bore. So I've got a pretty good combo, you know. It's sort of like I got uh, uh, 9,000 pounds of machines to replace a 2,000 pound bridge port. And uh, I don't have a bridge port, and I really don't plan on getting one. Because I've, I've had my days with bridge ports. So, <laughs> I got the bridge port elbow and a bridge port shoulder. So, uh, that's that. But I enjoy this stuff. You know, th this, this machine is really pretty cool. But, you know, if you're a commercial shop, what do you do with that distance? <laughs> but, you know, uh, one thing about this mill is uh, this thing's got five horse, weighs 5,000 pounds. It's just got a huge base. For a brown and sharp mill, number two, this is a heavy. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of fun with that. I'll do a, I'll do a bunch of videos on it. I think it's gonna be really cool. Okay, well I'm gonna load this video and I'll be back with more action. Thanks for checking it out.